Good afternoon. Uh, hopefully you can see and hear everything okay. As you can see, we got another bespoke love spoon that we're working on in the vice. So yeah, that's gonna be our uh, project for today. So depending on where you are, it's good afternoon, maybe good evening, good morning, depending on what part of the world you are in. Thank you again for joining us. So this is gonna be another demonstration of our style of wood carving. Um, low relief, I think is what this is called. Who we got joining us? The Gerald, hello! Glad you can join us, great to have you with us. Thank you for joining us for our, for our live stream. Yeah, so this um, Love Spoon has, we got some olives and the olive leaves at the top. We've got entwined hearts. We put that on a lot of our bespoke Love Spoons. Uh, we got some initials then to go in a heart below and then the daffodil underneath. We got Thomas the Woodcarver here, looking at me rather puzzled. Hello, love. Good afternoon. Oh, he's currently uh, sorting out some orders for us. Yeah, there's an email with the, the details in. So we're, we're having a conversation in the, in the middle of this. So what I'm going to start off by doing is to just try and get the depth to uh, the carving that I want. I'm carving a piece of oak again. You may, some of you who've uh, joined us a few times may realize it's one of my favorite timbers. Who else have we got here? The Wood Burning Warrior. Yorktown, Virginia. Thank you for joining us. Great to have you with us. Ah, oh, brilliant. There we are. And it's, um, yeah, this is this is what we do. Um, this is starting to become a regular thing on a Monday where we're doing a live stream so you can see what we do. Um, you can see the processes that we use. Give you an idea as well, to get it to this stage, you know, a lot of you know this already but we'll use the scroll saw to, to, to get it to this sort of stage and basically prepare it ready for the hand carving. So that's what Is we've that, done um, to get it to this message? stage. That's it, the hi There we are, we'll start with that one as, as a question. Um, does, does anybody know, do you all know? I know our Welsh, our Welsh, um, Viewers will know this one. Anybody else though? Do you know what Llongabachiadai means? There we are, put it in the comments section. Just started with carving spoons a few weeks ago. Brilliant. Well, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's a lovely process. You'll, um, you'll really enjoy it. It's, it's, a, it's a lovely lovely material as you'll uh, know to work in. Do I have to write all but it's that? a lovely process as well. I think that was the message that That's they the want. I, I would just put the Tlonga Archiadai and then that message there. Okay. Yeah. So it's, I don't need the... the I, I wouldn't, no. Okay. So yeah, we're, we're um, just sorting out a few. I think that's a love spoon we were just sorting out there that has been ordered um, for an engagement, I think. It says love from Got another NZ. comment there. Um, such the... Oh, hiya, Don. Great to have you with us. Oh, put, thank you for joining do put, us. Do I put you can hear us this time. We 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 sort it we we, we sort it when uh, yeah but I when, gotta I gotta do the cards so. the so <laughs> yeah thanks for joining us Don last time uh, the that we had you with us we were uh, we were struggling with sound it was on um, Saint Dwin Wednesday we were struggling to get sound then we were struggling to get picture bit of a nightmare we were having so as you can see straight away we're working on the depth of our carvings. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little bit of depth on this one first of all. And I'm not gonna to touch this one because I can use that. I've got lines on there. I can use the lines on that as a reference. So just a little tip there for anyone's new to carving. If you do mark it on the wood, it's always useful to have different references to work from. So what I will try to do is the, the detail I got on there, I'll try and replicate it on this leaf. Um, but yeah, projects like this, doing bespoke love spoons, one of our favorite things to do because uh, you, you get to carve all sorts of different things and that's, that's what makes it, makes it interesting, makes it fun. Who else we got? Oh, hiya Tommy, hello everyone, bit late today. <laughs> yeah, good to have you with us though as always. Thank you for joining us. 
We would, we would ask in everybody now, I, I would imagine you know this answer. My first question for everyone is, is what's the meaning of Llongavachiadau? Somebody asked us to put that one on a message card. It's quite a mouthful, it's double L. Shall I spell it? Well, I, would, I think Tommy will be straight in with an answer on that one. That's my prediction there. He'll be straight in with an answer I'll for spell everybody. It, I'll spell it out. I reckon Don will know that one as well. Double Longer. L. O oh, I lost this one now. Double L O N G Y F A R C H I A D A U. We've actually put this on a, one of our love spoons. Do you remember what we did on one of our love spoons when we put Klongavachiadai on there the first time? It was 2013, wasn't it? Yeah, but do you remember what we did? Yeah, we we, we, we spelled it wrong. So there we are. That was a good that was a good uh, start. No, but we still got the wrong spelling. Yeah, we still got the wrong spelling on there. Yeah. Yeah, we well, spelled it. But it's a bit of a twist because. Well, the people call me Dai. Was a bit of a. Because it was. We put it on there. Longavachiadai. May give a clue with that. Oh, we got an answer. Borada, Ed Thomas. Borada. It's Prananza here, but Borada for, for, where, for where you are. Yeah, without giving it completely away, um, it was on there, and it we spelt it wrong, but my name is Di, so it fitted in. Here we are. Yeah, Don's got it. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Well, basically what happened, we put it on a love spoon for, it was the year that I, I got married. So that's why we put it on the, uh, on the love spoon. And we went and spelt it wrong because we spelt it at the end D A I. But as you all know, I'm known as Die Love Spoons, so it fitted in in a way. So we and, left it as it other, was. The other word we had on there, dear, was Enora Buena. Yeah, Enora Buena. Enora Buena. And of course, that's the Spanish as well as Felicidades for congratulations. Well, Tommy said, not without Google Translate, you wouldn't get that one. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, it's. Um, it's a bit of a long, but I suppose congratulations long word as well. And yeah, so we put it on there because my wife is Spanish. We put it in Spanish as in order buena. We put it in English because that's what we talk to one another in. And we put it in Welsh as well because, of course, being Welsh. So we have three different versions of congratulations. So what we're just doing, we get in that shape for that first leaf. We're trying to get the depth that we want on it. And afterwards, that's why I've kept that in. So I can, I'm can i using that as a guide. I think this one as well will be a, a good one for for doing um, the shellac on afterwards as well, did So uh, we'll have to get the shellac ready. Okay. Do you want to explain to everyone as well? You've been experimenting a bit, haven't you, with the finish? Oh, yeah. Yeah, do you want to, do you want to come and explain to everyone what you've been doing with the finish? So this is the thing with ourselves, we're always trying different things, different methods. So over the weekend, when I came in the workshop, Dad said to me, he said, oh, I've been just playing about with a different method of finishing. And it was, it came up quite nicely because as everybody will know, we mainly use three coats of shellac sanding sealer, but we always try sort of different things, different ideas. And so when he when he comes in now, he'll probably have a few pieces to show everybody. But we just tried a different method, and that's that's what it's you know all about. We try different things. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And there we are. So we're just adding a little bit of detail to the leaves. And this is the beauty, really, of doing bespoke work. It allows us the opportunity to carve all sorts of different things and do all sorts of different styles of carving as well. So you've got the shellac. There we are. There's, there's the shellac. There's the shellac. You can see, you see at the moment I haven't shaken it up. So it's... You've got it in the two parts. There the shellac are. sanding sealer. So now, got another message. Oh, we shake it up. Midnight Joker, glad you can join us. Afternoon. Great to have you with us as always. 
So yeah, do you want to explain your your different methods? So he's just shaking up the uh, he's shaking up the shellac for us at the moment. Well, that's before we shook it up. You could see it. What happens? It the shellac. It it sort of. Um, well, because we use sort of pre-made shellac sanding sealer, that it's in two parts, isn't it? I should have done this. Separates into two parts. I mean. Using another but what it is basically container. well just to explain what we've been what we've done is to use um, two coats of shellac sanding sealer and then afterwards you've been using a combination of some oil yeah um, you well, basically put some oil in some beeswax haven't you yeah what was it uh, oh dear me linseed yeah a little a bit little of linseed oil, oil. A little bit of beeswax, it's, mix it together. It's not the first time that we've used this, and well, I, I'd be interested common, in a, It's quite common for... Has anybody else tried the same thing? Because we've tried it at different times and used it and then gone away from it and things like that, but it does it does give a nice, a nice finish. And so, the reason we're looking at it as well, as we were talking about last week, prices, everything's going up. And we're, so we're looking for... Always looking for a finer finish, a better quality finish, of course. And, and to get the best finish possible. But also as well, with the way that prices are sort of jumping up and jumping up, we're looking for different ways for saving a little bit as well, isn't it? Because my brother Math, he's a beekeeper, so we've well, got access to the beeswax. This is the first disagreement. Now, I don't agree with what Dave is saying, you see, because it's got nothing to do with saving money. There we are. So if you want to explain it. Well, it really hasn't, because all I'm concerned at is getting the best finish. We don't really care what it costs, we yeah. just want the best finish. There we and are. So, you know, we've experimented over, I have anyway, over 40 years. Uh, years ago, it used to be varnish, um, there was yacht varnish, there was a, a matte finish, Ron Seal, different products. Um, some people don't like any um, finish at all on their spoons. They, they like them just natural wood. So, you know, we're always looking for what we consider the best finish. And so, I, I occasionally, I, I try French polish, uh, button polish even, uh, just waxing spoons. But I found that shellac, uh, shellac, uh, what's it called? Your shellac sealer, and um, it, it. First of all, people used to say, "Well, what about filling the grain?" Well, the first coat actually does tend to fill the grain, <coughs> and it raises the grain as well. So you have to sand it down to a fine finish. Then you put your second coat on. And then it's a choice then between do we go with a third coat to get a more of a gloss finish or do we look for a more... Um, Wait, there's a question I'm going to answer in a minute. Almost matte. Um, but, you know, the beeswax then uh, with the oil, it, it just polishes it. And of course, again, with the lump spoon over the years, of course, these things, are, some of these have been there since the... <coughs> 17th century so when I, I I used to use teak for instance so I would only use teak oil uh, and, and keep polishing there's an interesting um, question come in um, about finishing shellac yeah you're right basically if you're using shellac sanding sealer yeah it's not really suitable then for practical purposes so with the love spoon we are 99% of the time we're making spoons that are decorative yeah. um, items so they're not for practical use if you're going to be using them for practical use there are various different ones this one I have used butcher's block oil um, cat skill butcher's block I've, I've used that before because it's food safe excuse me so yeah they, that is one that you can use um, also as well, the other thing as well that I that I would say, this one here is a bit of oak. 
Now, there's a bit of debate coming across because there are more and more people using oak. Um, they are using oak now for... Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push this in front of you now then, Dave. Yeah. Just to show everybody there we are. what I've done that's, to it. So, so I've just mixed, mixed it now. That's what the noise the has been. That's the shaky noise. And so it's all now ready for... <coughs> Yeah, would, now there's an interesting one because more and more I, I've seen now people say using oak, which is what we're carving here for practical uh, sort of cooking, you know, cooking utensils and things like that. Now, when it, when I was sort of coming through with this, uh, oak would have been one that you'd have avoided, wouldn't it? Because it taints food. Yeah. So it's interesting because there's more, I don't know, chopping blocks and more different things. And I've seen people saying, oh, no, it's a good one for using. Again, throw it open to everyone. What, what are your thoughts on that? Our thoughts would have always been that oak is one to avoid because it does taint, it does taint food. Yeah, we, we were going with uh, beech. Um, You've got the, the saying about only using beeswax. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. Some people do. Yeah. yeah. And you can get... <laughs> you can get liquid beeswax as well, can't you? Which, yeah, can um, I, I, I must say, I, I did speak to a, a professional um, French, French polisher. polisher as yeah, well. we mentioned Two it last week. We, yeah. And um, he now uses uh, this shellac. Shellac, yeah. He puts two coats on and he waxes then afterwards. And, and that was on. You know, work that would be that was even on a on a stairs he was doing. So, you know. It, it's all sort of. Uh, I think it's you got to try different things <coughs> and all the rest of it. But another yeah, po another popular one was uh, Danish oil. Yeah, and you you tried things as well. <coughs> I remember over the years you tried things like wire wool for instead of sandpaper, but you yeah. you didn't get on with it, did you? Well, no, because the wire wool used to go into the grain, and you get little bits of black S and scratching and things like that. <coughs> yeah. And the other problem you've got to watch with that is that you can't store it where there's any uh, sunlight because it has a tendency to um, go on fire. Yeah, it's a bit of a fire hazard. So yeah, when yeah, anyone who's got it in the workshop, of, uh, make sure it's, it's well undercover. Do you want to have a check? Yeah, I don't it's, know if there's it's any... all about experimenting and finding what suits you. Yeah. And, and of course, the customer then has to be happy with that finish. That's right. I'll bring that further forward in the vise. Hopefully that'll bring it into better focus for you all then. Um, so yeah, we're, we're just building up these layers. Now the trickiest part that I've got here, these two leaves are behind that olive. So we've got to, um, we've got to basically work at pushing these down. Well, there's one there. I personally wouldn't use a spoon with shellac for food. That's, that's right. That's fine. Yeah. Because spoons, Absolutely. Our, our love spoons are for decorative purposes. That's right. We only, we're only making them for, for decorative purposes. And so we, we wouldn't use. Yeah. Because over the years we've had people asking us, you know, oh, can I use this as a, a sugar spoon and things like this? And I, I always tell them the same thing, not really, they're not intended for, I mean, for that we, we, purpose. We're still technically on lockdown here, so we, we're not having customers to the workshop. No. But um, we, we did last autumn, we were able to have some customers through. And the one lady, she didn't want any kind of... Um, finish it at all. Finish at all. She just wanted the bare wood. That's so, right. No, under normal circumstances, people would come in here yeah. and they would choose then what kind of finish. Um, you know, if they want a different kind of finish, then we would try and accommodate people. That's right. 99% of the time, what we're, what we're sort of making, it's, it's decorative, it's to be hung on the wall. I know there are links, you know, people will say there's a link, see, with the love spoon and the, and the Welsh cowl spoon. Another question for you all. Cool, we're getting lots of Welsh questions. Is anybody familiar with cowl? Have you come across cowl at all? There we are. Do you know what cowl is? If you and haven't it's, had and the it's, actual Welsh cowl, well, there we are. We won't I'm give up. sure you would have had something very similar to it. Yeah. We won't give away what it is. Put it in the comments section. Do you know what cowl is? It's spelled C Here we are. I think somebody may have. C-A-W-L. That's it. Because there are different cowls, and before somebody says we're not referring to the chimney pot, because there's also uh, a chimney. Ah, there we are. Wood, wood burning warrior. I only use beeswax. I have beehives on my property. Yep. 
Perfect. The wood burning warrior. I love Danish oil. So there we are. There and we that's are. so it's all. And that's what you find is that because <coughs> we're all because we're all different, because we're doing different things, because we've got different approaches, everyone <coughs> will will have different things that will suit them suit them better. So you just see, we're just nearly there with the first of our olives. Initially, I just carved it down and we had that oval shape. But there's that little bit where, there's that little bit just at the top of the olive. So I tried to get that shape into, into the design as well. So that's what we're always sort of uh, developing the design as, we, as we're going along, really. This is what I've got to mainly work on now is where these leaves are going to be going behind um, the, the olive there. So we're just going to finish off this, this particular leaf. And again, in terms of, um, mentioned there, some of you new to carving, again, what we're doing, we're organizing our work to sort of um, suit ourselves to get the best out of what we're doing. So the piece at the top, this has got, probably got the most intricate carving on it, but for ourselves, it's the best thing to tackle first because this isn't something that we would be doing on a sort of regular basis, on a daily basis, as the entwined hearts and then the daffodil at the bottom is something we'd be working on more regularly. Midnight Joker, what it used to, uh, it depends on if the piece is going to sit on a shelf or how often it's going to be handled. Yeah, that's um, it. Hard wax. Uh, oil works well on one isn't book. it isn't it fascinating how many different approaches and how many different thoughts when it comes to finishing it's the same see when, when you start when you start getting into discussions of or sort of you, finishing uh, Tommy's workshop uses Osmo top oil all right most of the time which is food safe anyway that's it yeah here we are Don Harrison how is the world's best meal on a cold day? It's spot on. There's been a few days here that have been, been cowl days. Yeah, the last four days. Don is definitely winning our quiz. Yeah. We'll have to have a Welsh, a Welsh word quiz. There we are. Yeah, like a lamb or ham soup or broth. And traditional, don't you serve it traditionally with bread and cheese well lamb is the traditional lamb is the traditional one but popular with... served with cheese uh of course you'll have possibly kafili cheese but they don't make kafili cheese in kafili any longer do they no. bit of a disappointment so you can see we're just building up that shape and again the idea for this is as well to try and help out anybody who is new to wood carving, anybody who's learning. So what I'm doing is I'm mainly working with the grain as much as I possibly can. So we've marked the love spoon out with a vertical grain. So you're marking out with a vertical grain because it gives extra strength and it just makes the carving as well a lot easier for us. And then you do your carving, you know, if you're working with the grain, it's just making life a lot easier as you go through it. Now I'm going to start just getting the depth that I want on these two leaves here, because this is what basically makes this, this particular piece a little bit more complex, is because I've had the brainwave of putting that olive right in the middle there, which is um, probably not the best of ideas. Another thing for anyone then starting out or anybody who's new uh, to our live stream and new to what we do, we're always putting a message and a story in our work. So this is a bespoke spoon and the link, we've got the olives at the top. There's a Mediterranean link and a Welsh link. So that's why we got our daffodil at the bottom and our our olives and the um, the olive leaves, that sort of olive branch at the top. And the reason I said it's Mediterranean is because I can't remember if it was Italian or Greek. I'm going to say Italian. I'm pretty sure that there was a there was a, an Italian uh, an Italian link with this love spoon, but don't quote me on that one. So we're still just bringing that olive there will be pushed right behind the other one. 
But for anybody making a spoon, you see how you can put the story into it. That's right. And, and how that... you can use different symbols to um, portray the two people. Uh, you know, obviously, um, that's one of the nice things about the spoon. You, you, can, put... you can tell somebody's story. You can tell... And this is something we're always saying about with, with your work. If you can have a story and a message in what you're doing, it, it, it gives it a really good basis to work from. Um, we've, been, we've been doing, as you may notice, more scroll sawing because there's quite a lot of interest in, in uh, different scroll sawing projects. And that's something, again, on that side of it, with the scroll sawing things, that's where we do it a little bit differently is that we always have a little bit of a story behind um, what we're doing. It's just something that we like to do. Yeah. Part of our work is, is the storytellers. Well, just push that there, Dave. Right. For anybody, because that's how I used to make the love spoon, using the coping saw. And um, obviously the scroll saw now gives you so much more. Uh, well, for us as wood carvers, it's interesting, isn't it? Because we're wood carvers, I would say we're wood carvers first. But the scroll saw has become an important part of, of what we do then as, as wood carvers. And now we're even into um, a stage where we're doing scroll saw sort of only projects where sometimes we're, we're actually demonstrating things oh, yeah. where we don't do any wood carving at all. The wood warrior, we call this stew. That's it. Uh, we call it stew as well, but in, in Wales we specifically referred to it as cowl. And because lamb is really expensive, but sounds really good. Um, well, that's the one thing, see, we got in Wales, so there's plenty of. Yeah. There's more sheep than people. When well, he is right, it's still uh, It's still lamb. expensive. Even in Wales, well, it's yeah. quite expensive. Yeah. So that's what's... you know, a lot of the lamb that we get um, is often imported. It comes from New Zealand, of course. Yeah, New Zealand, a big producer that <laughs> is, um, but I always, I, I personally always go to the local butchers because because I, I like my Welsh lamb. Yeah, you've so. got to have some Welsh lamb. It's got to be, it's got to be Welsh lamb. You've got to give us that one, see? Yeah. So you can see, we're just getting that depth. And then once we get the depth on our carving, so the idea is we're getting different layers to, to our work. And again, we, we recreate similar things when we're doing our scroll saw work. We like working with, with layers. Um, interestingly, excuse me, and slightly off the subject, I've been doing more and more work. We've we've recently bought, um, we've recently signed up with Photoshop. I've always used Corel Paint Shop, and one of the things that I I like with these different programs is you work in layers, and it's very interesting how two things that may seem completely unrelated, wood carving and sort of photo editing, video editing, things like that. It's interesting how there's a tie-in because you work in layers. And so you think, you think about what you're doing in your carving, how to build up layers. I just find that doing different things like that actually helps me in the sort of, uh, in the day job, where you're, you're working in different layers, just gets you in a certain mindset, I think. Yeah. And you're thinking about that storytelling, that sort of thing. I'm going to put that on the spot now. Where did this wood come from? Do you any ideas with this one? I think, did this come from a local timber store, this one? It's a nice piece of oak. It's carving you nicely. Put me on the spot, no. I got a feeling that this was one, what it is, most of the oak that we have, we do recycle from old furniture and old buildings. But we were under a bit of pressure because we were selling... Oh, this one came from um, just past Halford West. That's yeah. it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's that. And I actually think that it's... Is it French? Did you say it was French? It could well be, yeah. Yeah, and because uh, and, uh, what it was, we don't normally buy a lot of oak because we normally reclaim it. But we, we didn't have much choice because of the situation. We were getting a bit short on oak and we had to go and buy some. So that's where this one uh, came in from. So you can see we're just doing that little bit of detail on the top of the olive there. We're gonna have to do something <laughs> with the other one. Midnight Joker, 
It's like people raving about Kobe. I don't know how you pronounce it. K O B E beef. Right. In reality, Kobe beef is all from Hereford stock. That yeah, someone yeah. took to Japan because he liked it so much. Um, well, well. Because of course, I always remember <coughs> the Her the Hereford the the bull. That was the that's the symbol in it for the for the football team was always. The Herefordshire the, the Her Herefordshire Bull. Oh yeah. So we're just building up those layers. And we're just pushing that depth. I'm gonna do a little bit of a surround. So what we do, it's just my style of carving. I just bevel around the outside edge just to create another sort of layer. Also, it sort of softens that sharp edge. So if you're new to carving, again, that is not sort of um, better or worse if you do it. That's a personal style, but I like to sort of soften the edges as a, as a finish. And I tend to do that more so. Dad doesn't take off quite as much to soften, soften those edges. So we're just bringing that around just like so. Did you go to get something? Yeah, my belt, because my trousers are falling. Oh, there down. we are. Thomas the Woodcarver's losing his trousers, so uh, he's bought he's gone and he's gone in the house to get his belt. That's just as well. We don't want any unwanted surprises on the live stream. So we just turn it round in the vise and for those of you who are starting out with your carving, I sit to carve. I find I'm more comfortable and that's what suits my style of carving best. Dad stands to carve and always has done. If you sit to carve, then you just turn it round in the vise as you want to work in the opposite direction. If you stand, you can just go around the other side. Okay, we've got a question here, Dave, to answer. Right. Uh... The wood burning warrior. Yeah. I, I know a spoon can be any length you want. Yeah. But what is the normal size for a lunch spoon? And um, that's basically what he's asking. Right. I, I would say you're in the realms. I'm just looking. I don't want to say too much in case I give things away, but um, one for yeah for for a future um, wedding, but of something with. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, we have to be very careful what we say because <laughs> occasionally, especially here, you know, in, in, well, in basic, this area, well, basic, you might be making a spoon for somebody and um, somebody, else, if especially if it's a wedding, you know, you, you get, we've, we've had incidents, well, you know, we're 40 years, we've had incidents where people want to buy the sp a spoon for the same wedding and that tends to give you a bit of a problem there. Yeah, but, but going back to the going back to the question, the size, I, I would say you're you're in the realms there of how long is a piece of string. Um, there's no sort of right or wrong. If you're looking for what the average love spoon that we make, what size is the average love spoon? I would say between twenty five centimeters, which is. About 11 inches. Well, let's put that one on there, there so you've got the length yeah, of that so one. Yeah, so 25 centimetres is... <coughs> that's clever, isn't it? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be better if they had them the, the same way round? So 25 centimetres, I'm reckoning that's around about 10, 11 inches. Yeah. But, I mean, saying that, we do a lot of yeah, though, spoons... I mean, you can see the one we're doing at the moment. What is it? It's... Well, it's 30, exactly the length of a. It's, it's this 30, one is it's exact, 38. Yeah, it's it's the exact length of the measuring on on that ruler, 38 centimeters or 15 yeah. inches. Measure the spot swan one there, Dave, as well. There we are. That's, that's one. That's, that's one typical, that I've been working on. That's a typical size. Yeah, that's. If you were asking what our most popular size of spoon, I would say it's sort of between between nine and 15 inches. Yeah. Um, but there's no right or wrong. Yeah. But I mean, if it's, a, if it's a special, I mean, the one you're doing now, which was 38 yeah, centimeters. Yeah, that's, that's right. Kind of, especially, if, and of course, a lot depends on where the spoon is going to go. Yeah. Uh, who it's for, where yeah. then, what kind of accommodation the people have got. Because if you've got well, it, a, a small uh, cottage, yeah, then, you know, you, you would tend to sort of put 
the spoon. It, um, you're gonna have a smaller spoon. To fit. Yeah. yeah. Now the interesting thing is, is most people, on our website, I, I actually ask people, can you answer certain questions? And one of them I ask is, how, how big do you want the spoon? And what most people tend to do, the most common answer is about eight inches. And I'm usually telling them, for the symbols that you want, and for the amount of work, you know, the amount of detail that they're wanting, it's usually necessary to nearly double the size of the love spoon that they want. The expectation of people is, is a smaller spoon than quite often than is than is required. Is there another question now? I thought you were gonna No, I don't really know. No, I no. Mean, you know, but I mean, that you can see that's the first one that was made yeah. by myself, and that's twenty-five. If you're, but if you're, if you're starting out, nine and a half inches, Dave. There we are. You can put that. There we are. That's so nine yeah. and a half so inches. So that's the first one that Dad did. Yeah, but that's an engagement spoon. That's right, and we always sort of say engagement spoons, generally speaking, are a little bit more simple than the uh, wedding and anniversary love spoons. But again, there's no rule or reg. It's just generally. Um, what we talk, we were talking about this the other day, weren't we? We always suggest people going a little bit more simple on it because with an engagement, you've still got a bit more thinking time, haven't you? Yeah, uh, and, and again, you know, it can depend on the the people that you're carving it for. That's right. Um, I, I've I've had situations as well. Um, I can think of a love spoon I did last year, and immediately the size of it was one of the most important things in the design because they had a, a very large space on the wall and they needed the love spoon to be 85 centimeters long, which is quite large. That's quite a long love spoon, but it just fitted with what they need. So what I would say is if you're starting out and you're looking for the average and things like that, um, don't give yourself any restriction. It's what suits your tools, what suits the wood that you've got and what suits you as a carver try different things and sort of find out the size and the dimensions that, that suit you best. Yeah, that, that's, I think, the, the, often the, the, a piece of wood as well itself will, will dictate. dictate. Yeah. Um, you know, if you've got a really nice piece of, we, we'll say, holly then. Yeah. Um, Sometimes you, know, you, you, you look at it and you'll have a big old split running yeah. in a certain area and that will then restrict you on, on what size you know, you're going to be working in and what you can actually do with it. Because um, we, we have quite a lot of holly coming into us, but it does does have that tendency, doesn't it, to split. Yeah. And so you... I mean, we mentioned it on the last uh, live stream, I think it was, with the, the chap from Tenby who get, oh, brought... He brought us a piece of timber yeah. to use. Uh, so we were quite restricted to... We, we were restricted on the size of the yeah. log. We were also then... Um, we're also conscious with that one because we haven't been able to do the, the entire drying out process as normally we would prefer to be doing all of that ourselves. Hopefully, as we're talking, hopefully you're starting to see um, how this sort of carving, how it comes together. Um, that one, I'm just going to change because that needs to really sort of connect in some way. Um, yeah, hopefully it's sort of starting to take shape. The other parts of the design, as I said, this is why I start with this particular carving is because it's it's not one then that I would be doing on a regular base, uh, sorry, basis. So we're just doing those leaves, just trying to get them in there. Any any thoughts from yourself? Any thoughts from yourself, Dad? How's it looking? How's it coming on there? Well, it, it's, it's okay, but I mean, you you, you could go even deeper if you wanted to, you know, it's, it's oh, wow. oh, you can keep on and on, really. Well, that's, mean, uh, that's a very interesting one, because normally, the biggest complaint I have from Thomas the Woodcarver is, is I've carved it too deep. I agree, yeah. So I, you, you, you'd like me to go deeper on this one? Well, no, what, what sort of, you know, because of the olives, yes. they're so round, Yeah. you know? So you you want them to? I mean, when I first started to carve, I used to carve the back as well. So you so, carve the entire yeah. So you know you three dimensional really. Yeah. 
Well, I was with you, love spoon is perfectly acceptable. What I'm going to do, I'll, I'll get a little bit of, a little bit more shape on these then. No, oh, they're fine. No, oh, they're fine. Yeah. So I get a little yeah. bit more shape. This one, what it is, the more shape I put on this one. Yeah, that's the difficult this one. This is the tricky one because the more shape I put on this one, the more I've got to push everything down. Yeah. And because I'm demonstrating this for you all to see, I may go back over it afterwards. But the more depth I put on that one, the more depth that I need for the entire carving. Yeah. At the end Ho of the day, it's an impression. That's right. Of an olive. Yes, that that's the idea. Yeah. Is to create that impression yeah. of the leaves and then the olive just resting on the top. It's coming on quite nicely. If I do say so myself. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. So once we're, uh, once we're through our olives, we're gonna then go on to the entwined hearts. And that is, um, that's something we use on quite a few of our bespoke spoons. We can't use it on our standard spoons. The reason we don't use that is because you need, this is, this, this is things that we're thinking about when we're designing. If you try and do these entwined hearts um, on our standard spoons, you have, you have that hole in the middle. You can always fill them with smaller hearts, something like that. But if we were to, to take those two J's out, you've got two big holes in, in your design, which doesn't look, very, um, doesn't look very appealing. So those, again, for, you, for any of you who are sort of starting out, who are learning, those are the sorts of things that we're thinking through when, uh, when we're actually designing a spoon. And it's far better, if you can try and get your designing right, makes life a lot easier when it comes then to the making. So for instance, this particular one, it would have been easier if I hadn't have put that olive there, but I, I thought it looked nice, so that's why I've left it there in the, in the design. I've got two templates to show you here, Dave. Okie doke. To illustrate the, the problem. Yes, so there we go. Same thing with that one, where you've got this design here, you got, if you took those initials out, you have the gap in the heart. So the one thing you could do is to leave a solid heart with that one there, which means you lose this link line, but you haven't got the big gap in it. So, so you know, going on that one, you, you, you can't yeah. design that. Um, you know, it's, it's gotta be, it's gotta when, be done when, for the when individual. When the order is taken, yeah. somebody's initials, whether it's A and B, D and E, whatever it is, you have to then design that into the spoon. Yeah. And likewise, of course, we, although we've got that template uh, with J and A on it, yeah. we've got another one here with an N and an S. Yeah. And it's the same problem. You can't, you know, you can, you can draw around the outline and make the design, but that's as far as you can go. You have to leave those hearts that's in right. the center. So, um, and then when it comes to the sort of bespoke work, that's all, all of that, that's what basically that's what gives it its 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 individuality are yeah. uh, those sort of personal details on it right i've got this last last leaf just to do a little bit more detail i'll get the shellac as well in case you want to um... yeah and then what i'm going to do i'm going to sand as well i'm going to use a p240 sandpaper just to smooth around those olives so you all can see how they actually, uh, how they're going to come up. And hopefully that'll be the bulk of this demonstration. Because as I said, the other aspects are more, we know where we're going more with those. This is a little bit what I would refer to then as improvisation. So I'm improvising the carving as I'm going along as the other things, because I carve them so frequently, you have a much clearer direction in, in what we're doing. There we go, so just that little line down the middle. But the beauty with the Love Spoon is there are very few rules and regs. You can very much design however you want to. You can include the things that you like We've done everything from different logos to different aspects of nature, people's interests, their hobbies, their pets. 
That's an interesting one because that can be tricky. We tend to tell people, for instance, if you want to represent your dog, use a paw print or something like that because actually carving the dog on there, that gets very, very sort of um, time consuming and complex. Have we got another, got another question on there? Very good, Haddy. Yeah, give it a go. It's great fun carving a spoon if you're thinking of having a go. Give it a go. It's great fun. It's a lovely process to have a go at. And um, yeah, let us know if you've got any uh, questions or anything about carving spoons because it is. It's it's a great way. It is. It's a really good way as well to get into wood carving. The love spoon seat as a starting point with wood carving, you've got a lot of the different skills that you'll need to develop as a wood carver, and you can incorporate all sorts of different aspects. And whatever type of wood carving you're interested in, or you enjoy, or that you're familiar with, that'll, um, that can all be part of your, of your spoon. There we go. Now I think, do you want to put a little coat of shellac on there, Did I'm going to carry on yeah, carving on that one. Do you want to put a, if you just put a coat of shellac on yeah. there for me? Now I'm going to start working on these entwined hearts. I'm just going to push it in front of everybody. There, there we, we are. are. That's the shellac. So that's the shellac mixed this, up. By the way, that's the meths, okay? Methylated spirits. There we go. This is the, um, you know, this cleans the brushes. So, so that's the sort of neutralizer. And we've changed, we've changed what we're doing with that as well, haven't we? Because um, what we're doing with the soaking the brushes, we're soaking them and cleaning them and then taking them out of the mess, aren't we? Because we yeah. reckon that may be part of the reason why all of our brushes keep falling apart. There we are. I think I've still got a little bit of sand on the bottom of those olives. There we are, that's the first. Just, um, it's so um, easy to use, you see. There we go, sis. And I use a finer brush then to get inside all the... Um... I'll just dry that off a little bit. Just take it, sorry. That would have been a disaster. I nearly tipped the shellac. There we are. So you can see we've got those olives and we've got those little bits of detail on the leaves. So that's the nice thing with the love spoon. You can incorporate things like that into, into your design. What I would sort of say is, with the love spoon, is, is tell, tell your story get your message, what story, what ideas, make it really sort of meaningful. What things are important to you, what things are significant. Get your message into, into your Love Spoon design. So we just finished now, we've just finished with Valentine's. I was it one of the so, things in Wales, of course, you, <laughs> we're not, unfortunately, we're not having weddings at the moment as such. No. <clears throat> but on the wedding day, you quite often the, see you'd see the bride receiving a, a love spoon. Yeah. You? Uh, you know, some people give a, a horseshoe. A horseshoe. Um, but uh, quite often, people come in and ask for a, a love spoon for the wedding day itself. You know, and then no. of course it's presented either by the flower girl or page maybe, and so it's quite. Uh, well, common to see the brain. I suppose in some ways, it's not that we we don't stick with the, the traditions. We actually do stick with a lot of the traditions when it comes to the love spoon. But one thing you notice with it is that people can get, and especially starting out, you can get overwhelmed because there's a lot of there's a lot being written and said about traditional symbols, and we get a lot of requests, and they say, oh, "I want this for this." particular reason because they they read the lists of what different symbols mean yeah and i think that's one thing that we always try to get across is not to restrict yourself with rules and regs because i think that can actually stop you doing what you would like to do because you think you're you're going against the the tradition almost yeah just clean that off so it doesn't stick to the shellac so we're just, again, we're working on our depth. So we're just dropping the two J's. We're trying to drop them down in, in the design itself. And then 
Just go down there two seconds and back up. I don't know if Josh and Luke are listening, but they're, they're that's my two grandchildren in Cardiff. We haven't seen them for a little while. My two nephews. Lockdown. So I, they did ring just now. So whether they are watching us up in Cardiff, I don't know. If they are, give us a... Put a comment. A yeah. Let us know if you're watching, boys. Hope everything's okay. Now with the uh, with the boys at different times, we've had them in the workshop and we've shown them how, how we do the wood carving. And it's great to to be able to help them. What we do see, because there's a lot sort of said with health and safety and things like that, we show them how to do it safely. So both hands behind the blade and cutting away from yourself. I know the children are on holiday at the moment. They just started the um, half term. Um, Here so in Wales. And, um, but it, it, the Love Spoon is a, is a lovely, we've, we've said it before, it's a, a fantastic project for school children. Well, yeah, and we've, we've been contacted recently. There are a few schools that are um, doing a few competitions. Yeah. So if any of you are looking at this live stream and that's what you're doing is, is a competition, that's, that would be the message then to get across is, is to tell your story don't restrict yourself in any way in terms of the message and the ideas that you want to put into your love spoon and in, enjoy the process. Because it's artwork to start. You start yeah, uh, that's drawing right. your, uh, you know, what, what we do, the, the, we get the different children in various classes to um, make their own uh, design. We did this, we did it as a competition last year and yeah. Don was one of our winners. Because Don sent in a design. Well, of course, um, we made that one. Didn't we, we made that one. Yeah. yeah. And um, and so that's what we. That's that's one of the nice things then to be able to tell a story and and have a message. And that's exactly what Don did. He had that message in his spoon, um, and it really it really struck a chord in the circumstance and at the time. Yeah. And that's that's why we decided to make it. So you can just see we're just working our way around the outside. So it's almost sort of creating, what, what I do is I sort of create a border. It softens, it just softens that edge. And then to do the entwined hearts, same as we demonstrated last week, you're dropping the one heart. We want to be careful. We don't want one heart dominating the other. In this one, because we've got two J's, it's not as bad because there can be debate as to whose initial has gone first yeah. because they've both got the same initial. But that's what you've got to be careful of when you're making bespoke spoons and things like that. You don't want, for instance, in the entwined heart, you don't want that one heart dominating the other one. And as you'll notice, we carve with the grain and then once we've carved everything that we can in the one direction, we turn it round in the vise and we start carving in the opposite direction. So the bottom of this J, we just push that down, do the same on the other side. And the message and story part of it in this one, it's a, it's a family love spoon. Now looking at things that we're doing on the channel, things that we've got coming up, we've got a few different uh, scroll saw videos that we've been working on. We're doing a few videos I'm going to do where we focus on projects that haven't, haven't got any wood carving in. It's basically because there's been a fair bit of interest with the scroll sawing. We've actually just um, joined up with a scroll sawing group on Facebook, which has been fascinating to see what other people are doing. And as well, if you're interested in, in scroll sawing, We've just put on our website, we're putting free templates up. So the different videos you'll see us demonstrating, we're now putting the templates on a dedicated page on our website. Have a look at those videos. The link is in the description to our dedicated scroll sawing page. There's also as well, if you are learning to do spoon carving and love spoon carving, there's a page on our website also dedicated to spoon carving. So you can get on there. There's a few free templates and there's uh, links to different videos that you can see that hopefully 
will give you a, an idea for how to get started with making spoons. I'm trying to think, what else are we uh, working on at the moment? Trying to keep warm. Trying to keep warm, absolutely. Be interesting to know as well, everybody else, who's got any projects on at the moment? Let us know what you're working on. I know Tommy's usually working on different ones and Midnight Joker as well, so let us know what you're working on. Now, once we've finished the entwined hearts, I'm gonna leave, we've got three initials to go in that heart, but I'll actually leave those until later on after we've done at least two of the coats of shellac. Otherwise, they, they tend to sort of fill in. Going back as well to the finishing that you were talking about earlier, a lot of people learn to do wood carving. They learn to do it with lime. And it was one that was in my head as you were talking about the finishing. Reason it was in my head, lime, because it's, what would you describe it as, porous? Would it be porous, Diz? It's very absorbent. He's reading the comment two seconds. Because it's very ab absorbent, when you do your carving in the lime, when you shellac it, you can lose a lot of your detail. So it was one that was in my head when we were talking about the shellacking. If you're working in lime, Quite often when you shellac it, you have to go back over all of your detail because you, you basically, you lose that detail when, when you're actually finishing it. Have you got a question or a comment there? Yeah, Clinton. Hello, uh, Clinton. Yeah, he very gratefully said um, he managed to get his lunch spoon uh, in time for Valentine's Day. Ah, fantastic. Uh, he had to improvise on the tools, but he got there in the end, so that's great. Brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah, the finishing line. When you shellac it, I find that you end up having to carve it again. Would you describe lime as porous? It's very absorbent. It's, it is it's, quite absorbent, yeah. I don't know whether yeah. porous is the right word for it, but it, it absorbs the shellac and you lose your detail. So I know when we've done spoons over the years with it, it's one thing that I find it basically sucks the... Um, Unlike all timber as well, you know, one part of the tree is different than the other. Yes, that's right. It's, it's, oh, it is such a, an interesting material to work with. It's, uh, so we're just working now on the top where this is the bit that we use for hanging the love spoon. But again, all, all with a vertical vertical grain so you're working with that grain all the time and can i can i just come in there and do a little bit for you dave just a second okay because i know okay do just two seconds i know you're Swap doing it over. like that well yeah i i i would you know for anybody that hasn't got that sort of strength okay i would be doing i'd be doing that well it's, look at that that's incredible you and Midnight Joker must have been thinking about the same thing at the same time. Because just asked, on some of our larger spoons, do you use a mallet? Yeah, well there it is, Midnight there Joker. Dad uses a mallet. Great minds think alike. <laughs> I, I tend... Do I use a mallet? I do use a mallet. Um, I have to use the mallet that Dad's got. That's the biggest mallet that I can use. Because I've got to be honest, I've got a tendency, if I'm using a, a bigger mallet, I'm just looking round, we've got a bigger mallet, I can't use it because I'll start splitting the wood. Um, and that's why mine, that one, it's a lump of boobinga, that one there. Um, and basically, Dad had to thin it all down and make it smaller and lighter so I could use it. Because, we it and come back again now. Because I'm, I'm terrible for... I terrible, it was just something with myself. I'd hit it too hard and I, I would split the wood. But on, on some of the one-offs, it depends what the carving is and what direction you're carving in, I would say, with the, with the mallet. Well, for me, you know, I, that, the mallet, I do a lot of work with the mallet and chisel because, yeah. uh, uh, well, I've always done that way. It's, um... That's right. 
But I, it's, I, 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 I mean that one there. That's a nice little mallet to to work with. That one. That that one suits me. But the the bigger one, I can't find where it is now. But Dad's got a bigger mallet that he always used, and it. I, I'm, I'm terrible for splitting, overhitting it, and and actually splitting what what I'm working on. There it is. There. It's it's basically. See, it was a gentleman that Dad worked with. He Again, made me mem memories. Chap I used to work with made those two for me. That's the unusual yeah. thing. Bubinga wouldn't normally yeah. be a timber that you would use. And even it, the the handles. Yeah. One is oak, and the other, I think it was. Uh, Piranha pine, which is yeah. incredible, you know. And it's, it's interesting because people will look at that and think, oh, well, you know, the, the best mallets are things like the, the lignum and things like that. But, but for, as Dan said, it's, it's the memories of, of that, that gentleman making um, those mallets for us. You, we wouldn't want to replace those for, for anything, right. really, because that's, right. they're, they're, that's, that's significant. But there is, it may not come across on the camera, but that one is a lot more, it's about probably about a third of the weight more. And if I use that when I, I start splitting, splitting wood, unfortunately, so it's just doesn't suit me. So what I'm working on there, we're just working on the, the trumpet of the daffodil, just like so. The daffodil, of course, national flower of Wales, they are coming they, out at the moment. Unfortunately, they've had a bit of a battering because yeah. we've had very strong southerly winds and um, they're all looking a little bit sorry at the moment because they've been a bit battered by the, the, the conditions. Very unusual. I suppose not unusual to get strong winds at this time of year, yeah. really, but and strong well, locally, suddenly winds. We have a, a special daffodil. It's the Tenby Daff. The Tenby Daffodil. It's a very small daffodil, and um, you only see it in very... Um, Small in a, pockets, in a, in yeah. Very small pockets. You'll see it grow in. It's uh, the true tembi daff is is quite yeah. rare, isn't it? You'll yeah. see you'll see dwarf daffodils and things like that, but the the proper tembi daff is yeah. quite a rare thing. Now there we are. So we're just working on those top two petals there. Yeah, going back to the mallet though, I think again, I think that comes down to personal preference so for instance dad uses uses it more so than myself uh, let's have a little look just thinking now if I finish this off here and one question that we get asked a lot is why do we use a round mallet that's another one that we get asked for and it's a lot to do with it's a couple of things it doesn't go hollow in the middle and um, doesn't require the same amount of accuracy. So it's a little bit easier using a round one because we just want that extra bit of pressure. And I've demonstrated it before where you can just use <laughs> a lump the, of wood. That's the one I used to have as a joiner. There you go. That's Dad's joiner's mallet. For doing the mortise. Yeah, that was made from ash and uh, it's a beach handle. If you're doing a mortise, then you'd use that. But it's um, it's finding what works for yourself, isn't it? That's the because I, I we use that one now. What we do is when we're doing the the bowl of the spoon to cut down a little bit on the pushing we're doing to carve the bowl, we take the bulk of the wood out using a router and the templates. So our mortising mallet is now used to tap the template into the correct position. So it's got a, it's been repurposed. But yeah, that's why we use a round mallet is, it doesn't require as much accuracy in terms of lining the mallet up and it doesn't go hollow in the middle because eventually your, your square or rectangular mallet of course goes hollow in the middle because you're continually hitting it in the same place. So you may notice again, and this is my particular carving style, any sort of straight edges I tend to just round it all off, just to finish it. So we're rounding it just like so, same with this one here. And that again is my carving style, 
And that's really the message of this, is finding your own style and find what suits you as an individual best. We're just going to shape a little bit as well. Any sharp edges, just taking them off a little bit. Oh, as we mentioned, we're using a piece of oak. I think next live stream that we do, I'll have to, I'll have to carve something different because the last couple of demonstrations, we've been demonstrating the oak. We've got some beautiful teak there at the moment. We've got some nice walnuts. We've got some piece of mahogany. All sorts. Fruit woods. There we are. So I think I've got one cut and then we are on to our daffodil. That's our one little cut just in by there. How's it looking? We're getting there. Well, you are anyway. So we're just going to take that down a little bit. Just like so. And I'm trying to think now we, on the weekend, what were the two, we were designing two more bespoke Love Spoon ideas that people have sent requests in. One, I think has got an English Welsh connection because they were asking for a love spoon with a dragon and a rose. And again, they, they wanted to record their uh, pet dog on there. So we were we put a paw print, a few paw prints in the design as well. So it's just how you can incorporate those different elements. The other spoon had a lot of the traditional symbols. They wanted more, more focused on the traditional love spoon symbols. So they had a wheel. And one of the interpretations for the wheel is the idea of I will work for you. Um, they had a horseshoe, of course, for good luck. They had two, they wanted two daffodils in the design, a treble clef surrounded by some birds, uh, a heart with a keyhole, a key itself. So that's quite a traditional design. A lot of traditional elements to it. There we are, so we're just beveling that edge there. After I finish the carving, we've then got to put it on the uh, sander. We'll take it in next door, put it on the belt sander to take off what is left of our paper design. We will then bring it back in, do any carving that is required, because sometimes when you rip it down on the belt sander, it'll take out an aspect of, of the carving that you've done hand sand it and then we're on to our finishing there we are have we had any other no, thoughts okay. and comments no we're, okay. we're... we're okay. remember any questions any of you needing help with learning carving and with your wood carving get those thoughts into us so we've got a little bit of work just to do on this side And those last two petals, the bottom two petals, just like so. And after I've finished here, now this is something you shouldn't do. I've got to run next door. It's my son's birthday and I've got to prepare a couple of pizza bases. So that's my job for the rest of the afternoon. Normally, I'd be going on to do some... Uh, some more carving after I finished the live stream, but not today. We've got to head next door and prepare his birthday, uh, his birthday food. So we're just getting that depth. So those leaves, uh, sorry, so the petals go into the back of the trumpet of our daffodil. There's a little bit, this just bit of grass we put that on there, we put two bits, a couple of reasons, it balances up that part of the design and it gives it a little bit of strength and it fills the gap as well. So that's the reason that we use those strands of grass. So this one here just supports the trumpet and those two 
they're supporting the outside part of the design and fill in the gap because we don't like if we can avoid having sort of big gaps around the designs we will do so as we were saying if you can get your designing right it makes a big difference afterwards to your to your carving We just had uh, Thomas the Woodcarver's just gone out just to help out. There's a lot of work going on across the road, and as we mentioned, we've had um, we've had some wood from the work they've been doing. Some more oak, some oak flooring. Oh yeah, put that there now. Yeah, we showed everybody last week, but just for everyone to see again. Yeah. Good example for. This is the oak. That's the oak flooring. Now yeah. that's the only thing that's causing us a problem with that is this cut this little recess that they've cut yeah. in it but I've actually um, in the next sort of few weeks I'll be showing everyone I got an, an idea because when we had all of that coming in it's not because of that recess it's not going to be thick enough for us to make love spoons from so we'll we'll be showing everybody that soon what we've actually uh, come up with is an idea to use that wood it's a, a bit of a unique, a unique take on the love spoon again. I think I can hear somebody coming in. Oh, it's the birthday boy. It's the birthday boy. Daddy, can I have my tablet because, <laughs> because, because Josh and Luke asked me if I wanted to join their cake on a moment. There you go. Everybody have to wish you happy birthday now. Careful with that cable, Nico. Yes, you can go and find it, Nico, if you can. Put your shoes on though. There we are, that's the birthday boy. At least you know now everybody that it is definitely live. He's six years old today, and as he mentioned, he quite likes his tablet. That's his latest thing he's into. We're trying to get him going with the carving. At the moment, his brother, who's a little bit younger, he's more interested. There we go. So we're just going to finish off down the outside here. A little bit of detail on this bit. Just like so. And now we're very much into the finishing of our carving. Taking away all of those sharp edges, getting that depth on the carving that we want. Just carve on the back of that one. There we go. Yeah, nearly there. Now again, we've got this sharp edge on the outside there. I've, I have done a little bit of sanding comment on there to see. A happy birthday, I will pass the message on to him. Six today. Six today and at the moment his biggest interest is tanks. That's what he's into so that's going to be another scroll saw project I think that I'm going to have to have a look at is to scroll saw him a something tank themed. Last year it was Fireman and Fireman Sam. And this year, this army things and tanks. And the police a little bit as well, so. Not wood carving at the moment. Him and his brother doing, uh, playing together battles at the moment. One last, a little, that one there, we're getting a bit of resistance there. Because there's a knot just on the side. We'll have to sort that out. Just a little knot in the wood. So I'm just going to carve down the outside like so. And let's look at finishing off, finishing off this daffodil for you all to see. Yeah, I've been looking for a while at a tank themed scroll saw project for him. Might have to make him a tank. You'd be delighted with it. So that's just the front of the trumpet of the daffodil. The 
few little bits of detail as well. One, two, three, and four. There we go. Now, as always, just to say thank you for all joining us. Very much appreciated. Thanks for getting those comments in. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. Certainly uh, helps us out. Thank you again for supporting our YouTube channel. Our next live stream, hopefully all going well, Daddy. will be next Monday. Hello, Daddy, are you going to say hello to everyone? need to take your phone away from my tablet so it doesn't take the Wi-Fi off. Okie dokie. There we are. That's the birthday boy. He's now got older daddy's telephone. So I'll have to go and rescue that. Just a little bit across the top as well. Did you manage to do it for him? Just like so. There we are. And that is our bespoke. That's our bespoke spoon. So there you go. For anyone who's new to carving, that's how we carve a love spoon. Just like so. We start off in terms of organization. Do your carving that you're most, not most concerned about, but do you think might cause you the, the sort of greatest issue. Get that one done first. So that's why we started with our olives and our olive leaves at the top. And then afterwards, the things for ourselves then that we're doing more regularly, those are the things that we leave until afterwards. So there we go. Another bespoke spoon. Thanks for joining us. And as always, we'll be back soon. And thanks for all your best wishes. Thank you all. And thank you for the happy birthdays. Midnight Joker as well. Thank you. All the best. See you again next week.